After a very long and grueling primary season, Donald Trump and Joe Biden emerged as the candidates for the Republican and Democratic parties respectively. Both campaigns spent plenty of money on virtual events amidst the global COVID-19 pandemic that has haunted the eventual winner of this election as their first task on day one. Donald Trump's approval rating has wavered around 44% nationwide, while Joe Biden leads in national polling by a small 4%. With a woman vice presidential nominee, Joe Biden's campaign would make history, as would Donald Trump's marking the first time that four presidents have been consecutively re-elected. Welcome to Election Night 2020. Poll closings begin at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It is now 7 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have six states at this poll closing hour, the states of Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Vermont, and Virginia. The first call of the evening out of the state of Kentucky, Donald Trump wins with their eight electoral votes. Out of the vice president's home state of Indiana, 11 electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner. Joe Biden will carry the state of Vermont and its three electoral votes. And in the battleground state of Georgia, 16 electoral votes, too close to call Donald Trump with a very resounding lead right now. In the state of South Carolina, Joe Biden currently leads with 6% of precincts reporting, too close to call, nine electoral votes at stake. And in the state of Virginia, Joe Biden with an early lead, 13 electoral votes, currently too close to call. We now have some Senate projections at this hour in the state of Georgia, also too close to call. Right now, incumbent David Perdue ahead of John Ossoff, his Democratic opponent. In the special election, Doug Collins leads his Democratic opponent 4% of precincts in, both seats up too close to call. In the state of Kentucky, Senate Majority Leader currently leads uh, Amy McGrath in the state of Kentucky, too close to call, 14% of precincts reporting. And Mitch McConnell is the second most unpopular senator in the United States, facing a tough re-election bid. And in the state of South Carolina, Lindsey Graham behind Jamie Harrison at 58% too close to call with 6% of precincts reporting. And in the state of Virginia, Mark Warner has a very strong lead over his Republican opponent with 6% of precincts reporting. We also have some United States House of Representatives to report. Out of the sixth district made notable from the 2017 special election, the most expensive House race in United States history, Karen Houndell won that, center, that House race back in 2017, did not win it in 2018, now running again against Lucy McBath, the Democratic incumbent uh, who currently leads her in this contested House race, and in the neighboring seventh district, also too close to call, no incumbent here, 19% of precincts reporting, too close to call, Democrats with a narrow lead. And in the first district out of the state of South Carolina right now, Joe Cunningham, the incumbent at 52% uh, against his Republican opponent at 48%, 37% of precincts reporting, too close to call. And in Virginia, the seventh district, Abigail Spanberger, who was elected back in 2018, 22% of precincts reporting, too close to call. And we also have some gubernatorial projections at 7 p.m. Out of the state of Indiana, Eric Holcomb, the Republican incumbent who won back in 2016 against all odds in the state of Indiana, goes to the GOP for another four-year term in the state of Vermont. Phil Scott, the incumbent who was elected in 2018 uh, in his re-election bid, too close to call. They have two-year terms in both Vermont and New Hampshire. Both are up in 2020. And on our balance of power map right now, taking a look at the overall electoral college, Joe Biden at three Three electoral votes and Donald Trump at 19 in the overall Senate no races called 35 safe Democratic seats and 30 safe Republican seats overall here you can see on the right and looking at the overall House of uh, Representatives 29 GOP seats have been called and 15 Democratic seats with numerous House seats up left uh, for the rest of the evening and taking a look at the governor map right now the Democrats have 20 seats the Republicans at 20 as well with one call in the state of Indiana and Vermont currently too close to call. At 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we have three states up with two very contested states, the states of Ohio and North Carolina uh, around mid of the hour. In the state of West Virginia, five electoral votes. Donald Trump is the projected winner, a ruby red state. In the state of North Carolina, it is currently too close to call. 15 electoral votes at stake with a mere 5% of precincts reporting. Donald Trump leads Joe Biden. 
and in the crucial battleground state of Ohio, which has voted with the president for the past six decades, 18 electoral votes, uh, right now too close to call Donald Trump leads Joe Biden. And in our Senate projections in the state of South Carolina, previously characterized as too close to call, Lindsey Graham wins. This is a victory for the GOP in the state of West Virginia. Shelley Moore Capito, who was elected back in 2014, a Republican pickup back then, a Republican hold now going to the United States Senate for another six year term in the state of Virginia, neighboring West Virginia. Mark Warner, the incumbent Democrat, sent for another six-year term to Congress in the state of North Carolina. It is currently too close to call. This is one of the most expensive and hotly contested Senate races uh, of 2020, currently too close to call. And let's take a look at our House of Representatives projections. In the state of North Carolina, Deborah Ross, who ran a 2016 Senate bid, ended up losing, but now projected to win this newly drawn second district in the state of North Carolina. In the sixth district, this is another Democratic gain here. Kathy Manning expected to win and being sent to uh, her first term in the United States House of Representatives. And we have some gubernatorial projections. Jim Justice, notable for his party flip back in 2017 from the Democratic to Republican Party, ultimately shifting the balance of power in the state of West Virginia uh, to the Republican Party. And in North Carolina, another close race right now. The Republicans actually ahead, too close to call incumbent Roy Cooper uh, right now at this point and taking a look at the balance of power looking at the overall electoral college map not much changing for the president at 24 electoral votes and joe biden at three in the senate 32 gop seats 36 democratic seats neither close to 50 at this point in time and taking a look over into our united states house of representatives map the gop with a strong lead right now at 52 seats the democrats at 24 again hundreds of house seats yet to be called by the end of the evening and taking a look at our governor's map the republicans now ahead at 21 gop seats and the democrats at 20. it is now 8 p.m and the polls have closed in a lot of states 172 electoral votes are up for grabs at this poll closing with the key states of florida and pennsylvania closing their polls at this hour Coming in now out of the state of Alabama, Donald Trump is the projected winner of the state's nine electoral votes in the state of Alabama. And in the state of Mississippi, six electoral votes there, Donald Trump is the projected winner. And the president is also the projected winner in the state of Missouri. Ten electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner in the state of Missouri. And in the state of Oklahoma, seven electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner in the state of Oklahoma. And finally, in the state of Tennessee, 11 electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner there. As for Joe Biden, in the state of Connecticut, seven electoral votes there, Joe Biden is the projected winner. And in the state of Delaware, his home state where he has served in the Senate for a very, very long time, three electoral votes, Joe Biden is the projected winner in his home state of Delaware. And in the state of Illinois, 20 electoral votes, a big, big state. Joe Biden is the projected winner. No surprise in Illinois. Also, no surprise in the state of Maryland. 10 electoral votes. Joe Biden is the projected winner in Maryland. And in the state of Massachusetts, 11 electoral votes. Joe Biden is the projected winner in the state of Massachusetts. Another big state in the state of New Jersey. 14 electoral votes. Joe Biden is the projected winner there. Joe Biden is also the projected winner in the state of Rhode Island four electoral votes he is the projected winner in the state of rhode island and in the most liberal part of the country the district of columbia washington dc joe biden is the projected winner of its three electoral votes taking a look now at the states that are too close to call florida with three percent of the precincts reporting in the state donald trump is out to an early 47,000 vote lead 29 crucial electoral votes are up for grabs in florida it is too early to call. And in the state of Maine, four electoral votes, 7% of precincts are reporting in Maine, and Joe Biden is out to an early lead. This state is too early to call. And in the state of New Hampshire, one of the closest races in the last election in 2016, with 1% of precincts reporting, Donald Trump is out to an early lead. And finally, in the state of Pennsylvania, Joe Biden's home state where he was born, 20 electoral votes. He is out to a commanding early lead with 5% of precincts reporting there. 
We have some projections to make in the U.S. Senate. In the state of Mississippi, the first ever female senator representing the state of Mississippi, Cindy Hyde-Smith, will win re-election to a second term in office as the senator of Mississippi. And in the state of Oklahoma, incumbent Jim Inhofe is the projected winner of Oklahoma's Senate seat. In the state of Tennessee, Bill Haggerty, Trump-backed candidate in Tennessee, is the projected winner. There, he will take over Lamar Alexander's old seat. He has retired there. And in the state of Delaware, Chris Coons, the incumbent Democrat, is the projected winner there. And in the state of Illinois, another incumbent Democratic Senator, Dick Durbin, is the projected winner in the state of Illinois. And in the state of Massachusetts, following his unseating of Democratic incumbent Ed Markey, Joe Kennedy III is the projected winner in the Massachusetts Senate. And next, in the state of New Jersey, following his failed presidential run, Cory Booker is the projected winner. He is the incumbent Democrat there. He will win re-election to the New Jersey Senate. And finally, in Rhode Island, Jack Reed, incumbent Democratic Senator, will win re-election to a, another term in office. One of the races to watch tonight is the Alabama Senate race between Republican Tommy Tuberville and incumbent Democrat Doug Jones. If the Democrats can hold on to this seat, they could have a chance of taking back the U.S. Senate tonight. But with 16% of precincts reporting, this race is far too close to call as Tommy Tuberville holds a narrow 6,000 vote lead. As for the state of Maine, one of, if not the most anticipated Senate races of the evening between unfavorable incumbent Republican Susan Collins and Democrat Sarah Gideon. Gideon is out to an early 5,000 vote lead with 7% of the vote in so far. As for the race in New Hampshire, Democratic incumbent Jean Shaheen is expected to win tonight, but with 1% of precincts reporting, her challenger leads by 358 votes. This race is too close to call at the moment. We now have some projections to make out of the U.S. House of Representatives. In Illinois' 13th Congressional District, Republican incumbent Rodney Davis is facing Democratic challenger Betsy Londrigan. This race is too close to call with 30% of the vote in. Betsy Londrigan currently holds a 2,700 vote lead at this moment in time. And in Illinois' 14th Congressional District, Jim Overweiss is looking to unseat Democratic incumbent Lauren Underwood, but with 24% of precincts reporting, she leads by 10,345 votes. And in Maine's 2nd Congressional District, many believe that this will tell the tale of how this election will go with 13% of precincts reporting. Democratic incumbent Jared Golden holds a 329 vote lead over Republican challenger Eric Brakey. This race is too close to call. Out of New Jersey's 3rd Congressional District, Democratic incumbent Andy Kim currently leads David Richter by 5,507 votes with 21% of the precincts reporting. It's too close to call at this moment. And in Oklahoma's 5th Congressional District, a seat that many Republicans believe they can easily flip tonight. However, Kendrick Horn currently holds a 258 vote lead with 16% of precincts reporting over Republican challenger Stephanie Bice. And finally, in Pennsylvania's 10th Congressional District, Scott Perry, the Republican incumbent, leads Democratic challenger Eugene De Pasquale by seven votes at the moment with 6% of precincts reporting. Now we have a couple projections to make in governor races across the country, starting out in the state of Missouri. Mike Parson, the Republican incumbent, will win re-election to a second term as governor of Missouri. And in the state of Delaware, Democratic incumbent John Carney will also win re-election as Delaware governor. However, in the state of New Hampshire, Republican incumbent Chris Sununu faces off against Andrew Volinsky. This race is too close to call with just 1% of precincts reporting. Chris Sununu currently holds a 1,000 vote lead. We now have a key race projection to make in the race for the presidency. President Donald Trump is the projected winner in the state of South Carolina. He will win the state's nine electoral votes. No real surprise here, but he is the projected winner in South Carolina. We'll now take a look at the balance of power as things stand right now. In the race to 270, Donald Trump currently holds 76 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 75 electoral 
votes. A lot of states remain too close to call in the states of Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, and Maine. And in the U.S. Senate, the Democrats currently hold 41 seats to the Republicans' 35. They still have to make up a lot of ground in these races that are too close to call and in races where the polls have not yet closed. And in the U.S. House of Representatives, the Democrats currently hold 100 seats to the Republicans' 107. The Republicans will have to hope for an absolute miracle if they want any chance of retaking the House of Representatives tonight. And now looking at the governor map, 22 to 21, that is the lead for the Republicans right now with races in North Carolina, New Hampshire, and Vermont all too close to call and the polls in Utah, Montana, North Dakota, and Washington still not having been closed at this moment. It is now 8.30 p.m. and the polls have closed in one state, in the state of Arkansas. And in the state of Arkansas, President Donald Trump is the projected winner of the state's six electoral votes. No surprise there whatsoever. We now have some key projections to make in the U.S. Senate. In the state of Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, Republican incumbent, has defeated Democratic challenger Amy McGrath. A lot of money was put into this campaign in an attempt to unseat McConnell but he has won re-election to another term as Kentucky Senator. And in Arkansas, the Senate race there, Tom Cotton, the Republican incumbent, will win re-election to another term as Senator of Arkansas. We also have some key race projections to make in the U.S. House of Representatives. In Georgia's 6th Congressional District, Democratic incumbent Lucy McBath has won re-election to a second term as Congresswoman in Georgia's 6th Congressional District. She has defeated Republican challenger Lucy Handel and former Congresswoman Lucy Handel, who was attempting to regain her seat. Lucy McBath, however, has won by a narrow 0.6% margin of 2,064 votes. And in Virginia's 7th Congressional District, Democratic incumbent Abigail Spanberger has also won re-election to another term. As Congresswoman in Virginia's 7th Congressional District, she has defeated Republican challenger Nick Freitas by 14,979 votes. This is a big Democratic hold here. The first Republican gain of the evening in Oklahoma's 5th Congressional District, Stephanie Bice has unseated Democrat Kendra Horn. She has won with 52.6% of the vote to Kendra Horn's 47.4%, winning by over 14,000 votes. This is a big Republican gain for the Republicans. They needed to win here tonight. Finally, in South Carolina's first congressional district, an equally as important win for Democratic incumbent Joe Cunningham. This was a seat that Republicans were heavily targeting tonight, but Democratic incumbent Joe Cunningham has defeated his challenger by 1,016 votes, a very narrow margin of victory, winning by just 0.3%. And we have some more governor projections to make in the state of Vermont. Phil Scott, the Republican incumbent, is the projected winner of that governor race. He is the projected winner in the state of Vermont. Let's take another look at the balance of power. With his win in Arkansas, Donald Trump now holds 82 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 75. A lot of states remain too close to call at this moment in time. And looking at the U.S. Senate, the Republicans have made gains, and they now hold 37 seats to the Democrats' 41. The Democrats will have to look for some Democratic gains across the board here if they want any chance of retaking the U.S. Senate. And in the House of Representatives, the GOP currently holds 112 seats to the Democrats' 103. The Republicans are going to have to make some moves if they want to re-win the House here tonight. And finally, in the governor races across the country, the Republicans now hold 23 to the Democrats 21. A lot of races have still yet to be called at this moment. At 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we have numerous poll closings at this hour, taking a look at states ranging from the state of New York all the way over to the southwest region of the United States and in the state of Kansas. The first state out of the red wall, six electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner. Donald Trump will also carry the state of Louisiana eight electoral votes. Donald Trump is expected to carry the state of Nebraska. 
five electoral votes. Both the state of Nebraska and Maine are very interesting states. They divide their electoral votes based off congressional district and statewide vote. Donald Trump right now winning in the state of Nebraska and the state of North Dakota. Three electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner, and South Dakota with another three electoral votes added to the president's column. In the state of Wyoming, three electoral votes, Donald Trump is the projected winner. Joe Biden wins the state of New York, Donald Trump's home state, 29 electoral votes. Actually, correction, Donald Trump changed his home state to the state of Florida back in 2019. So Joe Biden does carry the state of New York. And in the state of Arizona, it is currently too close to call 11 electoral votes at stake right now. Joe Biden is expected to carry the state of Arizona based off of all polling data uh, and race ratings, but we will see at the end of the evening in the state of Colorado, nine electoral votes too close to call. Joe Biden leading Donald Trump and the state of Michigan, a crucial state to both campaigns, too close to call 16 electoral votes. Joe Biden currently leads and the state of Minnesota, again, too close to call 10 electoral votes. Joe Biden with a 12 percent lead with around 10 percent of precincts reporting and the state of New Mexico, a pretty solid Democratic state. The numbers surely reflect that right now at 65 percent of the vote for Joe Biden and 32 percent for Donald Trump. Five electoral votes too close to call and the state of Texas, 38 electoral votes. Previously, a safe Republican state has since narrowed up in the 2020 presidential election. Joe Biden behind Donald Trump by 8% in this state with 7% of precincts reporting and the state of Wisconsin, the state that gave Donald Trump the largest percentage victory in the Rust Belt states. Currently too close to call Joe Biden with a 6% lead statewide. And we also have some Senate projections right now in the state of Louisiana. Bill Cassidy, first elected back in 2014, is projected to go for another six-year term from the state of Louisiana. In the state of Nebraska, Ben Sass, the incumbent, sent to another six-year term. In the state of South Dakota, Mike Rounds, the Republican incumbent, wins another term. And in the state of Wyoming, Cynthia Loomis, the Republican incumbent, wins here in the state of New Hampshire. This is a key race. Gene Shaheen, uh, with a pretty substantial lead throughout the entire higher election season uh, wins another term from the state of New Hampshire in New Mexico. This is an open seat, uh, but the Democrats do hold on to this Senate seat in the state of Arizona. It is currently too close to call. Martha McSally, the Republican incumbent, uh, is in a narrow race between her and Mark Kelly. Martha McSally, if you recognize her name, it's because she ran in 2018 and lost, was appointed uh, after John McCain uh, unfortunately passed away and took over his seat for the 2020 uh, Senate election. And this is the uh, election for the special uh, case in the state of Colorado. Cory Gardner, the Republican incumbent, trailing behind former Governor John Hickenlooper, who also ran for president in 2020. Currently too close to call, over 40,000 votes separating the two. In the state of Kansas, Chris Kobach, the uh, most hated GOP man in the state of Kansas at this point, right now losing to his Democratic opponent with 11% of precincts reporting, too close to call in a very solid Republican state. In the state of Michigan, John James also ran for a race back in 2018 against Debbie Stabenow, ended up losing, now challenging incumbent Democrat Gary Peters, who currently leads John James by 6% in the state of Michigan. In Minnesota, Tina Smith, first elected in 2018, too close to call against her Republican opponent. In the state of Texas, John Cornyn, the Republican incumbent, expected to have a pretty solid race here, at least larger than the 2018 margin, and it looks like the numbers are reflecting that, but there is only 7% of precincts in. And in the United States House of Representatives, we have some projections here in House District 23 from the state of Texas. This is actually a close race in 2018, ended up going to the GOP, but is now a Democratic gain in the United States House. In the state of Illinois, the 13th district, Rodney Davis, the incumbent Republican, wins again here. And you can take a look at our overall uh, statewide uh, with 100% of uh, precinct reporting, sorry, district-wide popular vote data here. In the 7th district of the state of Georgia, right now a Democratic gain uh, for the uh, Democrats here. If you take a look at the overall margin, extremely, extremely close right now. A difference of 1,300 votes. Uh, this does end up going into an automatic recount because the margin was less than 0.5%. But uh, if we've learned anything from recounts, they don't change much about the outcome of the election. In the House District 14 in the state of Illinois, Lauren Underwood, the incumbent Democrat, sent to another two-year term into Congress with a mildly competitive race here with 100% of precincts reporting, 20,000 votes separating the two. And in the second district of New Mexico, the only real competitive district 
uh, here uh, right now too close to call the incumbent uh, Democrat with a very, very strong uh, Republican opponent in the 11th district in the state of New York. Uh, the incumbent Democrat at a pretty substantial lead with 2,000 votes uh, separating the two at 10% of precincts reporting in the sec 22nd district. Also too close to call another pickup for the Democrats previously in 2018 being, cha being challenged by uh, a notable Republican opponent. 19% of precincts reporting here. The Democrats do lead and in House District 22 from the state of Texas uh, currently too close to call the republicans have the slight edge here at 19 percent of precincts reporting and in house district 24 it seems to be they're all grouped together in this race it is currently too close to call an exact statistical tie between the two candidates with 19 percent of precincts reporting with less than 1,000 votes separating the two and in terms of our gubernatorial projections in the state of north dakota Doug Burgum, the incumbent Republican, winning another four-year term from the state of North Dakota. And our balance of power, looking at the overall electoral map, Joe Biden trails Donald Trump by six electoral votes nationwide, Donald Trump narrowly leading at 110 electoral votes. Looking at our United States Senate map, the Democrats now lead at 43 Senate seats with the GOP at 41. Taking a look over at our United States House of Representatives map, it looks a little bit better uh, for the Democratic Party at 160. 66 seats to the GOP's 175 before the West Coast even comes in uh, for the Democratic Party right now with the GOP leading in the governor's races as well. The Democratic Party is facing a pretty notable opposition from the GOP. They are currently at 24 uh, seats with some expected uh, at least more GOP pickups for them uh, or holds in the governor races. As we proceed through the evening, the Democrats at 21 seats. It's 10 o'clock now and the polls have closed in the states of Iowa, Montana, Nevada, and Utah. Out of the state of Montana, Donald Trump is the projected winner of the state's three electoral votes. And in the state of Utah, six electoral votes, Donald Trump is also the projected winner in the state of Utah. As for the state of Iowa, six electoral votes with 19% of precincts reporting this race is too close to call. Joe Biden currently holds a 51,000 vote lead. And in the state of Nevada, also six electoral votes up for grabs here. This race is also too close to call with Joe Biden out to a 1,721 vote lead. 8% of precincts reporting this race is too close to call. We now have some Senate projections to make. In the state of Georgia, a key race tonight, incumbent Republican David Perdue will win re-election to another term as the Senator of Georgia. He has defeated Democratic challenger John Ossoff. Another key hold for the Republicans this time in Kansas, Se former Secretary of State Chris Kobach has defeated Democratic challenger Barbara Boiler. This is a big hold for the Republicans. And in the state of Minnesota, Democratic incumbent Tina Smith has won re-election to another term as Senator of Minnesota. And in the state of Iowa, 19% of precincts are reporting across the state and it is too close to call between Republican incumbent Joni Ernst and Democratic challenger Teresa Greenfield. Currently, Greenfield holds a 36,374 vote lead. As for the state of Montana, Republican incumbent Steve Daines faces off against former Democratic governor of the state, Steve Bullock. This is a high profile race and with 14% of precincts reporting, Steve Bullock is out to an early 2,330 vote lead. We now have some projections out of the US House of Representatives coming in. In Pennsylvania's 10th Congressional District, Republican incumbent Scott Perry will win re-election to another term in office. He has held off formidable challenger state auditor Anthony DePasquale as the Republicans are able to hold on to this seat. Scott Perry wins by 7,288 votes with 100% of the vote in. And in New Jersey's third congressional district, Republican David Richter has knocked off Democratic incumbent Andy Kim. This is a big Republican gain here as he wins by 4,064 votes votes with just 50.3% of the vote and 100% of the vote in. David Richter has won. It is a Republican gain in New Jersey's third congressional district. There are several races too close to call in the state of Iowa starting out in its first congressional district. It is too close to call with 17% of precincts 
reporting Democratic incumbent Abby Finkenauer leads by just 2,868 votes over Republican Ashley Hinson. In the race to replace former Representative Dave Lopesack, Republican Marionette Miller Meeks is running for the fourth time and is up against Democrat Rita Hart. With 15% of the vote in, Hart is out to an early lead. And finally, in Iowa's third congressional district, former Representative David Young is looking to re-win his seat against Democrat Cindy Axney. He lost the seat in the 2018 midterms and he is currently down by 106 votes with 15% of precincts reporting in Iowa's 3rd Congressional District. Out of the state of Utah, in its 4th Congressional District, a highly competitive district, currently Democratic incumbent Ben McAdams leads Republican challenger Kim Coleman with 24% of the vote in. He leads by 1,781 votes. We expect this to be one of the tightest races of the evening. It is too close to call. Last but not least, we have some projections to make out of governor races across the country. In the state of New Hampshire, Republican Chris Sununu has won re-election as governor of New Hampshire. And in the state of Utah, it is a Republican hold as John Huntsman has won this election. He will be Utah's next governor. And finally, in the state of Montana, with 8% of precincts reporting, this is a race we will be watching closely tonight as former Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney takes on Republican Greg Gianforte. Gianforte currently holds a 3,295 vote lead. This race is too close to call. Let's take an updated look at the balance of power. In the race to 270, Donald Trump currently holds 119 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 104. He leads by 15 electoral votes at the moment. A lot of races remain too close to call. As for the U.S. Senate, the Democrats currently hold 44 seats to the Republicans, 43, with races in Arizona, Colorado, Montana, Texas, Iowa, Michigan, Alabama, North Carolina, and Maine all too close to call. The polls have still not closed in Idaho, Oregon, and Alaska as we rate results there. As for the U.S. House of Representatives, the Republicans currently hold 183 seats to the Democrats, 169. They're not quite making up enough races in order to have any chance at a majority as of right now. And in the U governor races across the country, the Republicans currently hold 26 seats to the Democrats, 21. North Carolina, Montana, and Washington have still not been called. Those are all favoring Democrats, though. It is 10.35 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have some key race projections. Uh, right now in the state of Colorado, nine electoral votes. Joe Biden is the projected winner. He will carry the state of Colorado, which was pretty solid for Secretary Hillary Clinton, and even better uh, for Vice President Biden nearing a 10% margin uh, with nine electoral votes added to his column. In the state of Texas, this was pretty much absolute, but it was very interesting that it would be a swing state in 2020. 38 electoral votes. Donald Trump is the projected winner in the state of Texas. Um, a pretty narrow margin compared to Republicans' victories here in the past. A difference of over uh, around half a million votes with 81% of precincts reporting, 38 electoral votes to the president's column. And in the state of New Mexico, five electoral votes. Joe Biden is the projected winner here. Take a look at the uh, statewide race here. A larger margin than 2016 and 2012 uh, for Vice President Biden. In the Senate race, John Cornyn wins another six-year term as the Republican incumbent. It looks like they're going to hold on there. And in the Georgia Senate special election, a GOP hold Doug Collins, who actually defeated uh, incumbent Republican Kelly Loeffler after uh, a number of allegations against her for insider trading. Looking here, the uh, Democratic Party uh, ends up losing in the Senate race. And in New York's 22nd district, uh, Claudia Tenney wins this. It's a GOP gain uh, for uh, a pretty substantial victory actually in upstate New York and taking a look at the overall margin it wasn't exactly uh, as close as some of the other races we've seen here uh, especially in the House of Representatives 100% of precincts reporting a victory for the GOP in New York in the 11th district the Democratic Party holds on uh, as Mac Ro Max Rose the incumbent wins here uh, by a pretty uh, same around same large margin that uh, the 22nd district was decided by uh, a difference of around 5,000 votes with 100% of precincts reporting and taking a look at our balance of power. Joe Biden narrowly increases uh, to 118 electoral votes. Donald Trump with a pretty strong lead now at 157 electoral votes. 
in the United States Senate. The Democrats still trail the Republicans at 44 seats to 45 seats, taking a look at the overall party composition, which will be decided by just a couple of states. And taking a look at the United States House of Representatives, the Democrats are narrowly inching up to the GOP. The GOP at 184 seats called for them, 170 for the Democratic Party. We have some key race projections coming in right now. President Donald Trump is the projected winner in the state of Ohio. He will win the state's 18 electoral votes. A big win for him tonight as no Republican president has ever won election without Ohio. He wins by 6.9 points over Joe Biden and a margin of 309,000 votes. He will win Ohio's 18 electoral votes, a crucial win for his campaign tonight. Out of the state of Virginia, Joe Biden is the projected winner in the state of Virginia and it's 13 electoral votes. Virginia has gone blue for the fourth straight presidential election as Joe Biden wins with 50.9% of the vote to Donald Trump's 44.1%. He wins by 226,000 votes in the state of Virginia. As for the Senate race in Colorado, John Hickenlooper is the projected winner of that race. It's a Democratic gain and it's one that many people expected the Democrats to win tonight. Maybe the most predictable Democratic pickup of the evening. John Hickenlooper has defeated Republican incumbent Cory Gardner in Colorado. However, in Alabama, a big, big win for the Republicans. This is one they were expecting to win going into tonight. It's a pickup for them as Tommy Tuberville has defeated Democratic incumbent Doug Jones in the Alabama Senate race. Taking another look now at the balance of power. In the race to 270, Donald Trump now holds 175 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 131. Races in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Arizona, Nevada, New Hampshire, and Maine all remain too close to call at this moment in time. As for the U.S. Senate, the Republicans currently hold 46 seats to the Democrats' 45, with the races in Arizona, Montana, Iowa, Michigan, North Carolina, and Maine all too close to call, and these states of Idaho, Oregon, and Alaska still not having closed their polls. This is going to get extremely tight here as the hours wind down. At 11 p.m. Eastern Time, we have all of the states on the West Coast to report to you from the states of California, Hawaii, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. In the state of California, the biggest electoral prize of the night, 55 electoral votes, Joe Biden is the projected winner. Joe Biden will also carry the state of Hawaii with its four electoral votes and the state of Oregon, seven electoral votes, Joe Biden winning it by a pretty substantial margin, larger than Hillary Clinton's 11% victory back in 2016 and the state of Washington, 12 electoral votes. That very close primary seems a long time away uh, ago. And in the state of Idaho, four electoral votes, Donald Trump wins here. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our Senate projections at 11 p.m. In the state of Idaho, Jim Risch, the incumbent Republican, uh, wins in the state of Idaho. Oregon, Jeff Merkley, uh, the incumbent Democrat, wins the Senate race in Oregon. And looking at our House projections, we have uh, some pretty close races in the second district from the state of New Mexico. This is actually a GOP pickup uh, right now. Soon to be Representative Harrow wins this for the GOP. As you can see, it was a mild uh, lead for her throughout the evening uh, over the incumbent Democrat with 100% of precincts reporting uh, a pretty substantial win for the Demo- for the Republican Party in the state of uh, New Mexico. In the state of Texas, the 22nd district from uh, Texas, GOP hold uh, for Troy Nels right now, taking a look at 51.6% to 48.5% for his Democratic opponent, 9,000 votes separating the two. And in the second district from the state of Maine, Jared Golden, uh, though it seemed that he was going to lose for a very long time throughout the campaign season, ending up holding on uh, to this second district here for the Democratic Party. If you take a look at the numbers, very, very close within uh, a percentage point, 1,000 votes separating the two um, against Eric Brakey, who actually won this seat previously, uh, now a Democratic hold uh, in 2020. And in the 24th district from the state of Texas, uh, pretty much canceling out that 22nd GOP hold, a Democratic gain for Kim Olsen in the state of Texas. As you can see, 
with a very narrow but sure victory at 100% of precincts reporting um, with 0.5% and 1,000 votes separating the two, a win for the Democratic Party. In the 21st district in the state of California, it is currently too close to call. TJ Cox at 50% of the vote uh, with 18,000 votes at 20% of producing supporting. Uh, we'll see how that ends up at the end of the evening. And we have some gubernatorial projections. In the state of Washington, Governor Jay Inslee, who ran a pretty much single issue campaign in the 2020 presidential election, uh, now going to serve as another uh, four-year term from the state of Washington, uh, third term uh, at this point. And our balance of power map, Joe Biden at 209 electoral votes, uh, leading President Trump, who is at 179 electoral votes. And at, on our Senate map, the Democrats now have 46 seats, one away from their number uh, that they had after 2018, and the GOP at 47 seats with a number of contested races right now. Taking a look at our United States House of Representatives map, the Democrats have officially passed the magic number of 218. We have a major projection coming up in just a moment, 199 seats for the GOP. Um, questions whether or not the, uh, the Democratic Party will do as good as 2018. And on our governor map, we have 22 Democrats seats and the governors at 26 overall taking the majority in the national governors association north carolina and montana still too close to call and we have a very major projection at 11 p.m eastern time in the united states house of representatives the democrats will retain control here after winning it in 2018 the republicans thought they might have a shot after some notable special election defeats for the democratic party throughout 2020 in the democratic uh, party they are celebrating they have won the united states house of representatives and retained control now all attention points to the united states senate and the white house just 15 minutes after poll closings we have some more key race projections right now in the state of Georgia, 16 electoral votes. Donald Trump will win here. The Democrats thought they could make this race competitive. They ended up wrong. Donald Trump wins the state of Georgia um, by a pretty substantial margin, around 5% here uh, in the state of Georgia. 16 electoral votes. Uh, Joe Biden came close, but around hit the peak that the Democratic Party has recently hit in 2018 and now 2020 in both Senate elections. Um, looking back on Stacey Abrams' governor bid in 2018, Joe Biden at 46.4% of the vote with 84% uh, of precincts reporting. In the Arizona Senate race, Martha McSally sent home yet again uh, in this Senate uh, race. 2018 was the first time she lost. She loses again in 2020. Mark Kelly, the husband of Gabby Giffords. This is a Democratic gain. There are now two Democratic senators from the state of Arizona, something uh, that we didn't even see back in 2016 with two Republicans here uh, in Arizona. The uh, Democratic Party wins with 88% of precincts reporting uh, against a Republican incumbent. Very unpopular one, might I add. In the state of Iowa, the 3rd District, Cindy Axe, uh, wins here, taking a look at the statewide, uh, sorry, district-wide vote. Uh, she defeats her Republican opponent, who was actually the previous office holder, uh, with around 100% of precincts reporting, a very large victory for her in this close race. And taking a look at our balance of power map, uh, Donald Trump increases electoral margin from t uh, 11 p.m. at 195 electoral votes, and Joe Biden at 209. Looking at our Senate map, the Democrats and Republicans tied at 47 seats nationwide. Um, going to be very close. Taking a look at the House of Representatives, the Democrats have already won here at 231 seats. The GOP remains at 199 seats, and we will know if they break 200 at the end of the night. We've got some key race projections coming in right now. In the state of Florida, 29 crucial electoral votes. Take a look at this. Donald Trump is the projected winner in the state of Florida. He is the projected winner of the state's 29 electoral votes. He has defeated Joe Biden with 98% of precincts reporting. So far, he wins by 60,908 votes, a margin of just 0.6% over Joe Biden. And in the Iowa Senate race, incumbent Republican Joni Ernst is the projected winner of the Senate race in the state of Iowa. She will re win re-election to another term. She has defeated Democratic challenger Teresa Greenfield by 28,000 votes. She wins by a margin of 50.2% to Teresa Greenfield's 47.9% in the state of Iowa. A big hold for the Republicans there. Out of the state of Montana in the race to replace former Democrat Governor Steve Bullock, his Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney is the projected winner of the race for the Montana 
governor seat. This was a key race to watch tonight in governor races across the country and a key Democratic hold for the Democrats here in the state of Montana. We've got an update in the balance of power tonight. In the race to 270, Donald Trump has taken the electoral vote lead. He holds 224 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 209, winning the state of Florida. The races of Nevada, Alaska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, New Hampshire, and Maine remain too early or too close to call at this moment in time with the polls in Alaska still not having been closed. As for the battleground for the U.S. Senate, 47 to 48, that is the advantage for the Republicans. They hold a one seat advantage with the races in Montana, Michigan, North Carolina, and Maine remaining too close to call at the moment. And the polls in Alaska have not yet closed, expected to go to the Republicans there. So in effect, the Republicans hold 49 seats to the Democrats 47. The Democrats will have to win all four of these remaining races if they want a clear majority in the U.S. Senate. All the Republicans will have to do is win two out of these four races to reach that 51 mark and a clear advantage in the U.S. Senate. Finally, looking at the governor map, the Republicans hold 26 seats to the Democrats, 23, with the race between Roy Cooper and Dan Forrest in North Carolina, the only race yet to be called in the governor races across the country. We now have some key race alerts with actually pretty important calls in the state of Iowa. Donald Trump wins with six electoral votes yet again uh, in the state of Iowa by a, a closer margin than 2016. But Donald Trump still takes it away with 85 percent of precincts reporting. You can see a sea of red on the countywide map in the state of Nevada. Six electoral votes. Joe Biden is the projected winner, um, was mildly competitive throughout the campaign season. But the Trump campaign never really put forward a full effort to win the state. Six electoral votes. 74% of precincts reporting. And in the state of Montana, this is a huge victory for the Democratic Party. Steve Bullock, the incumbent Democratic governor, wins the Senate race. This is a Democratic gain uh, over the incumbent Steve Daines, who has defended this seat for um, quite some time in the state of Montana. The Democratic Party wins here uh, by a very narrow margin, 0.6%, a difference of 3,000 votes uh, in the state of Montana, a very solid state on the presidential level. The governor's race was certainly interesting. The House race is also very interesting, but the Senate, uh, I mean, this defies all odds for the Democratic Party, puts them in the running to possibly uh, picking up the Senate in 2020. Looking at the Iowa 1st District, uh, the Democratic Party holds on uh, with their 2018 victor. Uh, the Democratic Party will carry this seat yet again in 2020. Looking at Iowa's second district, the Democratic Party seems to have won uh, three out of the four House races in the state of Iowa. The Democratic Party will hold on to the second district despite having a retiring Democratic incumbent uh, representative. And taking a look at our balance of power map, Joe Biden at 215 electoral votes, Donald Trump leading right now with 230 electoral votes. Looking at the United States Senate, very, very close. 48 to 48, uh, pretty much uh, four races left to make the difference, pretty much three in terms of close races. Uh, it's anybody's Senate at the end of 2020. Taking a look at our House of Representatives map, the Democrats inch up to 233 seats in the United States uh, House of Representatives, 199 for the GOP. Still have not broken the 200 number uh, in the United States House. And on the governor's map, the Democratic Party uh, winning in the state of Montana, putting them at 23. The Republicans remain at 26 with North Carolina left to see if the Democrats or the GOP uh, pick up a governor's race in 2020. We've got a couple of key race projections to make right now. In the state of Maine, Joe Biden is the projected winner of all four electoral votes in the state of Maine. He will win all four electoral votes, including Maine's second congressional district, which Hillary Clinton lost in 2016. Looking at the numbers, he has won with 50.3% of the vote to Donald Trump's 45.1%, with 78% of precincts reporting this race can be called for Joe Biden. And in the state of Minnesota, Joe Biden is the projected winner of the state's 10 electoral votes votes. He is the projected winner in the state of Minnesota, winning with 49.5% of the vote to Donald Trump's 44.7%. He wins by a total of 119,000 votes, with just 81% of precincts reporting 
we can call 10 electoral votes in Minnesota for Joe Biden. As for the state of North Carolina, 15 electoral votes, a crucial, crucial swing state tonight, and Donald Trump is the projected winner. The president will win with 49.2% of the vote to Joe Biden's 47.9% in North Carolina, a huge win for the Donald Trump campaign. We can also project in North Carolina's highly contested Senate race, Tom Tillis, the Republican incumbent, has defeated Democratic challenger Cal Cunningham. An extremely, extremely close election here and one that was greatly anticipated and highly watched from both sides of the aisle, but Tom Tillis is the projected winner with 48.6% of the vote to Cal Cunningham's 48.1% percent winning by just 23,000 votes over Cal Cunningham. Now let's take a look at the balance of power. In the race to 270, Donald Trump maintains his electoral vote lead with 245 electoral votes in his column to Joe Biden's 229. Only the states of Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire remain too close to call at this moment in time. Lots of crucial states there that will determine the outcome of this election. Both candidates are in good positions to challenge for that 270 mark. As for the U.S. Senate, the Republicans hold 49 seats to the Democrats, 48 with the races in Michigan and Maine remaining too close to call. The Republicans have a safe seat in Alaska where the polls have not yet closed, so they will hold at least 50 Senate seats tonight, depending on the results in Michigan and in Maine. We now have a very important projection from the state of Pennsylvania and Utah's 4th Congressional District in the state of Pennsylvania. 20 electoral votes flipping from red to blue. Vice President Biden wins his birth home state uh, with 49% of the vote, a margin of 1.2% larger than Donald Trump's margin over Hillary Clinton in 2016. 20 electoral votes added to the vice president's column and in the state of Utah. The 4th Congressional District, Ben McAdams, who won back in 2018, defeats his Republican opponent uh, by over a percentage point, 4,000 votes with 100% of precincts reporting. And taking a look at our overall Electoral College map, 249 electoral votes uh, for Joe Biden and 245 for Donald Trump in the United States House of Representatives. The GOP has yet to break 200 at 199 House seats and the Democrats at 234. We've got a key race projection coming in right now. In the state of New Hampshire, four electoral votes, one of the tightest races in the 2016 election, has gone for the Democrats once again. Joe Biden is the projected winner. The former vice president is the projected winner of all four electoral votes in New Hampshire. He will win with 47.5% of the vote to Donald Trump's 46.2%, a margin of just 27,000 votes. Now let's take a look at the balance of power this evening. Looking at the race to 270, Joe Biden holds 252 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 246 with the races in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Michigan key in deciding this election. They will decide who wins the race for the White House. And of course, the state of Alaska is yet to have their polls closed, but the poll closings in Alaska are coming up at the top of the hour. However, the races in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Michigan have all of our attention this evening. It is now 1 a.m. Eastern time, and we have the last poll closing of the evening, well, now morning, from the state of Alaska, which is a very solid Republican state. Donald Trump is the projected winner of their three electoral votes. In the United States Senate, we have two projections, one from the state of Alaska. The Senate race here remains in the GOP column. Dan Sullivan, first elected back in 2014, and the Democratic incumbent senator in Michigan, Gary Peters, uh, ran a very strong campaign against John James, who was uh, not taking taken super seriously by Democrats, but as the numbers report, it's a lot closer than where it was just two years ago. Uh, John James definitely has a political future after this, but Gary Peters, uh, the incumbent Democrat, wins another term in the United States Senate in the overall balance of power. Look at our 2020 electoral map. Joe Biden has 252 electoral votes, three electoral votes ahead of President Trump at 249. 
and in the United States Senate, we have 49 Democratic seats and 50 GOP states seats. The balance of power hanging in uh, the overall main Senate race. This is the only Senate race we have yet to call uh, in the United States Senate. And also going ahead to take a look at the United States House of Representatives. Uh, the GOP has 200 seats and the Democratic Party has 234 with just one race yet to be called. We now have some key race projections and probably the most important call of the evening in just a moment. In the state of Michigan, 16 electoral votes. Vice President Biden carries this state, winning it with 50.4% of the vote, uh, a margin of around 5%, 4% uh, statewide, 16 electoral votes, 97% of precincts reporting. In the state of Arizona, 11 electoral votes. Last went to the Democratic Party in 1996 under President Bill Clinton. Joe Biden flips this uh, previously solid Republican state, winning 48.3% percent of the vote uh, 11 electoral votes and in the state of Maine Sarah Gideon defeats longtime incumbent uh, Susan Collins uh, winning here in the state of Maine at 50.1 percent of the vote a small margin a very very narrow difference of 1,975 votes uh, that will overall determine the party composition in the United States Senate in the state of North Carolina incumbent governor Roy Cooper wins another four-year term here uh, polling data had him up by around 15 percent on election day and we have the biggest projection of the evening Joe Biden has been elected the 46th president of the United States of America. He will go on to serve with a new administration come January 2021. He has won over 270 electoral votes in his third bid for the presidency, wins the overall White House serving there uh, in 2008 through 2016. Joe Biden wins the presidency. And as Joe Biden's victory is secure, the Democratic Party has officially flipped the United States Senate in their control. When you're taking a look at the 2020 Senate map, it ends up with 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans. And with a Joe Biden victory in the White House, the vice presidential nom gives it to uh, the Democratic Party as the majority party in the United States Senate. Taking a look at our Electoral College map, Joe Biden has 280 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 248 with only one state remaining, the state of Wisconsin. And in the United States Senate, it looks like the Democratic Party will serve in the majority for the first time since 2014 with a Democratic House with all together with the White House and the Senate in the House going to the Democratic Party for the first time uh, since 2008 under President Barack Obama. 50 Democratic seats, 50 GOP seats. In the event of a tie, the Democratic Party, uh, sorry, the incumbent party, uh, the incumbent vice president's party has the overall party majority. In this scenario, the Democratic Party wins. They have the slight majority in the United States Senate. And taking a look at our United States House of Representatives map, um, sorry, not the House of Representatives map, the governor map, the Democrats have 24 seats, holding on to the same exact number from 2014, uh, going to be very important in redistricting in the state of North, North Carolina. And now Montana expected to gain one House of Representatives seat, one possibly could go to the Democratic Party after uh, the 2020 census, 26 seats for the GOP. We are now upon our final projections of the evening. In the state of Wisconsin, 10 electoral votes in Wisconsin going to Joe Biden. The former Vice President Joe Biden is the projected winner in the state of Wisconsin. Extremely close, but he has flipped the state from 2016 into his favor. He wins by just 16,000 votes and a margin of just 0.5 points over Donald Trump. Joe Biden is the projected winner in the state of Wisconsin with 96% of precincts reporting. In his 22nd congressional district, TJ Cox, the Democratic incumbent, is the projected winner. He has held off Republican challenger David Valadao, the former congressman who lost his seat in 2018 to TJ Cox. However, Cox has managed to hold on to his seat in 2020, just two years later, in California's 22nd congressional district. At our final balance of power maps tonight, in the race to 270, Joe Biden has won 290 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 248. He has flipped the states of Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania from 2016 in his favor and defeated Donald Trump, the incumbent, with a margin of 290 electoral votes to 248. 
As for the House of Representatives, the Democrats hold 235 seats to the Republicans, 200. The Democrats have managed to hold on to their majority in the House of Representatives. In fact, they have been able to extend their majority in the House of Representatives over the Republicans. As for the U.S. Senate, the Democrats have also made gains here. 50 to 50, that is the split in the U.S. Senate, flipping a lot of seats for the Democrats, and they now hold the tiebreaker with the Vice President of Joe Biden holding the tiebreaker in the U.S. Senate. 50 to 50 is the split. However, the Democrats hold a technical majority. As for the governor races, 24 to 26, the Republicans hold a two-seat edge over the Democrats in governor races across the country, which will be important for the 2020 census, redistricting counties and such. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is an hour long video that has taken over months, uh, over a couple of months, sorry, to uh, prepare. And I had had so much fun with uh, Election Predictions Official working on this election night. This took a very long time. And honestly, it's all going to be worth it. 400 slides later and we're finally here. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to his channel as well as mine if you haven't already. The link will be in the description and at the top of the comment section as well. Uh, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Comment what you agreed or disagreed with and I will see you all in the next one.